Lewis, we're here at this conference, the Quest for Consonants, Theology and the Natural Sciences, and one of the sub-themes uh, is the concept of realism, um, critical realism, which Erna McMullen, who this uh, conference is in honor of, um, focused on the philosophy of science, but it's also critical in, in religion. You've been trained as a scientist in philosophy, a theologian, a priest. Uh, how do you articulate the concept of realism in science with, I assume, realism in theology? Mm. Realism is, a, is a, an interesting topic. Certainly, um, it has been discussed at length these last decades in the philosophy of science, and, and as you say, even in this conference, um, it certainly is an interesting bridge between the disciplines, yeah. uh, science and um, theology. However, I think it's important to realize that it's inevitable. I mean, there are no people who, who, who can live without the real in their lives, in a sense. We t sometimes think that you, you can perhaps describe the entire edifice of natural science without reference to, the, to reality, and we call these positions uh, idealism or anti-realism and so on. However, at, at the end of the day, there is something that is real, that is valuable, that you consider as the point of reference for your inquiry in any sense. So, well, the, the, the challenge is, in terms of what the definition is, is that everybody reckons there's something real, but the question is, is something real the, the ultimate uh, generator of what you see, mm. or is it the sense data? Mm. Is, is it the only thing that we can know is the sense data in science, and we can never get at the thing that's actually generating it mm. uh, because of our instruments and our sensory systems? And analogously, in, in religion, uh, you know, what, what are the analogs? Uh, because uh, the, even in religion, though, the sense data is, is even less, I would mm. say, than in science. Yes. Uh, and, and so the anti-realism sounds silly, but it's not, because it says that we, we have to be very humble about what we can really know. Mm. Um. Yes, I, I, my own reflection started with the use of the, of the word real. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do acknowledge that there are interesting and useful debates in the, the area of realism, anti-realism, structural realism, and so on. And I think there is still important work to be done. Um, I'm interested mainly however, on how real gets its meaning, the word real. Um, uh, let's consider a recent uh, new angle in this area. And this has been um, built up in the following way, saying that natural science is definitely different from religious mm -hmm. talk or theology, mm -hmm. because natural science, in fact, uses the word real as we use it in everyday life, in yeah. common sense. Okay. And so, in this line of argument, we say natural science is, in fact, an extension of common sense. What we do in, in, in everyday life, you touch objects, you realize that they're there, and you use them according to the laws of nature. And that's exactly what science does in the big way, in an extended, as it were, uh, range of uh, application. But it's the same way. Therefore, science is justified. Religion isn't, because the way religion deals with, with the objects it deals with is completely alien to what we do in common sense. This is a kind of argument that, in a sense, uses the real the way that we use it in, in as a distinguisher life. between mm, science yes, and religion, yes, yes. That, that science is clearly real, whether mm, it's the sense they have, the only thing it's clearly real, whereas what's in religion is, is uh, it doesn't meet those criteria. So I studied this argument at length, and um, I kind of I discovered that there is a very um, significant point made by this criticism. It's built uh, on pragmatist grounds, usually, um, bringing in Charles Sanders Peirce's initial consideration of common sense and, uh, and building on that this kind of undermining of religion. However, um, I think the whole issue is what we mean by common sense in every, everyday life. Uh, this whole argument depends on the idea that what we do in common sense, what we do in everyday life, is in fact always describing things and always wanting to know their natures. But we do other things in common, in, in common living, such as interpersonal relations and uh, acknowledging other people as persons and questioning, promising, uh, and joking with others. Life is much broader than just the descriptive analysis of what we do in everyday life. Yeah. You so, use the concept of holism mm. um, in understanding um, uh, uh, information of the world 
in science, mm -hmm. and then you have a more natural application of that in theology, is that right? So if you have a holistic view of what's real, mm. you then can harmonize exactly. the, the, the two more yes. properly. You, you're getting there faster than I am, because <laughs> in fact that was my, the idea of my paper on this, was that in fact if we consider the holistic nature, that means that life is not just describing things, even in everyday life. We have other areas of our interaction with the real, which also are a part of common living, common sense, and the, the, the religious talk, theology, is in fact built on those aspects, interpersonal relations, rather than just describing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, although I agree that science can be characterized as an extension of common sense, I would want to see common sense as a broader platform and that it can support in its justification also theological and religious thinking because theology deals with interpersonal um, issues like forgiving, understanding and um, uh, controlling our emotions just as we do with, uh, within a community of living people so also we extend this in, in, in a broader sense. So, so therefore a holism, can you say, is, is more uh, obvious or more natural in theology but you're also reading a holism to science and so that begins to uh, blend at least our human um, uh, apprehension mm. of both of them. So they're less different than they may appear to others. That's exactly that what, I, yeah, the, the, the general idea is that. And in fact, you can see it also in the way people live. Scientists in the lab remain humans. And when they go back home, they have to meet their families. Mm -hmm. They cannot just be, as it were, considering people, their um, family members as, uh, as lumps of particles were organized, they consider as, as persons. So the interpersonal is in fact connected with the, um, the more rigorous mathematical scientific view of the world. And does that process then give greater epistemic or, or um, intellectual justification for religion when you see it that way? That's my belief, my conviction is in fact that um, when we consider religion as primarily concerned with interpersonal dimension of living and science as primarily concerned with the more descriptive obligation that we have to describe nature and considering these as, as it were, extensions of a common, everyday, rich and pluriform way of living, I think you have a richer view of reality, reality in the broad sense, where everything is interconnected. Of course, we crave for more consistency, and we don't have it yet, but this is the kind of consistency, I think, which is healthy.